All righty, welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is January 3rd, it is 1.37 p.m., and we are here at HQ4. Bruh. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not the right sound effect. That's the that wrong sound effect. That is the perfect of- right sound effect. <laughs> no, dude, it should be a more triumphant. It should I've be been kind of more to- like... Here we go! That's a good one, too. That's kind of more the vibe. I didn't HQ4. even get to update it because I just got a new laptop. As you can see, 595. This is Barstool's property. Is that un- upside down for them? Oh, yeah, it is. Hmm. I once had to give one of these back. I'm going to have to give this one back. They're going to get me a new one, though. Yeah, but I had it taken from me. Oh, yeah, because of uh, uh, oh, yeah. the ignominious end to an illustrious career. I came in on a Monday, the Monday of 4th of July week, and I was fired, and I was just collecting some of my things, and I was I opened up my laptop for one final just browse, you know, log out, and as I was on it, <laughs> clicking around, Alba's Pete came over and closed it and took it. That's crazy. He's probably been waiting to do that his entire life, though, just to anybody, not you specifically. It but was, maybe you specifically, It though. was so demeaning. <laughs> took all over. I mean, that is on it. That's got to be good. That's like the peak of his job. That is the coolest thing he could possibly ever do. Yeah. Is so, go over and slowly shut someone's shut laptop it. and then just take it. He took it from me. You're like, you're done. The yeah, the, the, the silver <laughs> lining was it was it was bagel Monday, so and they hadn't cancelled all the bagels. Yeah. And so I got to eat like four or five bagel, That's bagels bagels nice. and sandwiches and stuff. Yeah, you take your, your laptop's worth back in bagels. I sure yeah. did. Sure did. Well, Good to see you boys again. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Happy to be back. Guys, today is probably our official celebratory honorary episode of uh, January 6th. That is true. I didn't even think about that. Unless we go live on January 6th from the Capitol. Brother, I'm totally fine with putting in the work on a Saturday. January 6th. You know, a lot of people forget. It was the first time Little Sasquatch was funny. (laughs) <laughs> Bro, not even close <laughs> At Barstool I was Barstool. funny dozens of times before then <laughs> No, at Barstool That was the first time when uh, you were actually funny Are you doing anything to celebrate? No, no. Nothing I go fishing Yeah Big into fishing right now What a surprise I know Well, you gotta find something to do when you're still You're, you're fucking What am I, 41 days sober now? You really gotta find, to find ways to pass the time <laughs> I'm in the middle of dry January I started that Nice, that's cute. I don't think it's the middle. Yeah, three days in. <laughs> I am on day three. You know of... you're struggling when you're calling dry. You're saying it's the middle of dry January and you're three days in. What has it been, a couple weeks now? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't need to replace drinking with a fucking hobby. Bro, you're three days in. You should not have even drank the last three days. You or at said, least the last two. You said you needed to pick up fishing in order because to Because I'm not 40 drink. days in. Things start to slow down around day 15. You want to find some new hobbies. Replace that. Gambling was the initial idea, and that has cost me a fortune. And football is unfortunately I have, canceled anyway. <laughs> I, I have not won a single bet since I quit drinking. I think that was like the, the key. I think I would wake up hungover and scared, and I would place the safest bets and win. <laughs> and now I'm waking up just confident as ever. Have you been a catch? Yeah, I'm fish? sure. I'm sure Tyreek Hill will score six touchdowns tonight. <laughs> we put a hundred dollars on that. You have no anxiety. You need anxiety to kind of uh, counterbalance all the. The unintentional chutzpah that you have in your exactly, life. Exactly. People exactly. just have balls for no reason. Yeah. They shouldn't. Now, I still have anxiety. I will say the no, the no drinking thing hasn't really changed my life that much at all, except I've lost a good amount of weight. I've lost 10 pounds in the last month. Really? Yeah. All from your, from your tummy? <laughs> I don't know, I think. My titties are no longer sagging. Really? Yeah, they're, so that's good. They're perky. They're what very they perky now? right now. Yeah, they're more. Uh, they flat. They're back where they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're flat. They're in the right spot. They're not fully flat. I won't. I won't say that. It's like but you they're flatter. Them. Before there was like a full on hang. Oh, they were hanging. There was a full a sag. Good hang? Yeah, like you could put like a fucking pencil in between my chest and my titties, and it would stay still. I could titty fuck. Yeah, yeah pretty easily. But now I uh, <laughs> with your pencil dick. Would you create a roof with your hand? No. Would you jam them together? To. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how jam? What them? do they stay in place? Are they fake? Dude, I have man breasts. They're fucking stiff. <laughs> There's a big difference between a man tit and a woman tit. My tits aren't fucking like swinging in the in the wind. You're Sweet chariots. Of a, a grandma's They're tits. Yeah. Stiff tits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're thinking of a grandma's sweet chariots. I am? 
Yeah. It sounded like Francis was. No, but you're thinking of tit swinging in the wind like that. I think that there's like an in-between between a, a, a regular sitting breast, two fucking rock hard pointy dicks that you don't even need to fucking hold a uh, pencil down to titty fuck, and two grandma tits that are like a grandfather clock that are just <laughs> swinging back and forth in front of you. Yeah, it sounds like you haven't seen enough boobs. Uh, that could be it. That might ball. be it. Yeah. You want me to show you some boobs, dude? I'll, go- no, I'll, get, no, I'll no. Google right now. It's the last thing I need right now. Distraction. Yeah, that'll kill your testosterone that'll output. Fuck me up. Seeing a single pair of breasts will si- single-handedly also, torpedo I, your I testosterone. I have not lost 10 pounds in the last month. Yeah, there's uh, no way. There is absolutely I've no probably way. lost 5 pounds. Why I've would lost you say 10 that? pounds. I've lost 10 pounds since the last time I weighed myself, which was before Skankfest. So it was actually in Vegas at the gym at Skankfest. And it was, uh, but I think I probably gained around 15 pounds that weekend and the weekends following. So I think I'm back. Like, I'm, I think I probably lost like 20 pounds since, since Skankfest. There was a documentary I watched recently called Blue Zones. Yeah. Have you seen it? No. It's about the have. areas in the world with the highest density of people who live to 100. Mm-hmm. And the, I only watched the first episode, which was about Okinawa. Okay. Um, which Heard? Is, yeah, yeah. And a big thing that they do before they start their meals is they say this Japanese saying. It sounds something like ho chi ba or ho sun ta. Okay. I don't know. But it means eight out of ten, which translates to we're going to eat until we're 80% full. That's smart. And it's stuck with me, and I've been eating until I'm only 80% full. Well, that's how you're kind of supposed to do it, right? I think that's like the problem with, isn't that what they say about Americans? Because we eat until like you can't even fucking move your body. Yeah. It's the, French, the French have a, it's a fundamentally different way of thinking about it. It's a, uh, je n'ai pas faim. Ah, oh, I see. no longer have hunger, <laughs> as opposed to I'm full. So you right. eat until you don't have hunger in you, as opposed to when you feel the bursting at the seams. Kind of similar to not being 10 out of 10. You're 8 out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we were going off that scale, I don't really remember the last time I was hungry. No. You just eat when you feel... When I eat when I'm when told you're bored. it's time. Yeah. Are you a breakfast boy? Mm-hmm. Every day? Oh, yeah. Really? I'm trying to get back on a normal eating routine because yesterday, like... So, yes, like I told you guys, I'm happy to be doing this because I haven't really been... I've been, it's been things have been slow. And, uh... I mean, we were on break and... Uh, yesterday I, I I was sitting there and I had like a just salad wrap for lunch, but then I, it was like 10 p.m. and I was like, dude, that's the only thing I've eaten today aside for probably a thousand calories of snacks. Ooh. So now I'm trying to get I'm trying to get back more into meals yeah, rather that than that kind of a diet's gonna get those titties <laughs> yeah. nice and well fuckable. That's the problem is that I I've now uh, my mindset constantly is just well at least I didn't drink two thousand calories of Bud Light last night mm-hmm. so let me order three thousand calories of McDonald's yeah. sober. Your own like replacement it. everything anything yeah. you do you're like oh I'm just gonna replace the calories with this exactly. I'm gonna replace the hobby of drinking with this hobby you're just trying to replace which isn't beating uh addiction no it is it's just replacing it with something else it's <laughs> definitely going to a better addiction though yeah it's going to a better one but, but it's I, I mean dude, I am, i'm more unhealthy than i've ever been in my entire life right i'm dude, i'm fully stationary i like it when i when i went to the office today that was the first time i've left this block in the last month you walked in and pe- there were people there who they were like didn't know who's who that you were. yeah they were like is he new yeah. <laughs> who's that skinny guy? Yeah. Oh, who's that fucking guy? He definitely doesn't have tits. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about a version of our own Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. You know how they fed the the evil woman in the woods fed them to fatten them up so she could eat them. Yeah. Yes. Well, I want to feed you to fatten you up so I can titty fuck you. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. You're. I mean, dude, it's pretty pretty easy. Hairball. You could just send Gretel. food to my house and it wouldn't even. I wouldn't even know if it's for me and I would eat it. I'm gonna send you some food. You could send me treats at any hour of Let's the night. Let's just send him like loaves of strom and like Wonder Bread or yeah. some shit, like just some kind. That's of... pretty much what I've been eating on Crustables five times a week. How many months would I have to feed you for <laughs> before you let me ejaculate on your Adam's apple, dude? Uh, like for no, there's no amount of time. Oh, so you right had away. an answer though. No, no you I did didn't. have one. No, I was gonna say a month at first, and then I was like, that <laughs> do doesn't. It. I was like, in, <laughs> in, in no take back. I was yeah, like, no I come back. on, that. you said it. No, you come said right it. on your little chin. You you stay away. From You're gonna me. have to let him come I on. I was like, that doesn't sound right at all. But you have to create the roof, otherwise I won't feel it enough. Ew, dude. Well, that's I don't know, so you know, gross. We'll compromise. I'll come in with a third hand and I'll create the roof. Oh, that's fun. So it's not really a Team gay act effort. between two guys, but it's more the three of us being gay. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't know you're such a homophobe, bro. I am super. That's, That's also super something that I've noticed when, uh, since being sober. When you're sober, you really start to find your true self, and I am extremely homophobic. I thought drunk thoughts were the true <laughs> thoughts. Oh, man. This is good. This is good shit right now. Cooking, yeah. cooking with gas. <laughs> what are the updates? Good? Oh, the big updates are that uh, Claudia Gay, Harvard Harvard president, stepped down. She did. President Gay. President Gay, speaking of homophobes. Yeah. And now the borders of Barstool Sports are back open to let in <laughs> <laughs> the refugees of Harvard. That's exactly right. I'm finally... They're taking down the wall. I'm getting, I'm getting like tons of back backdated emails being like, hey man, heard it's finally available again. <laughs> it's like in Bruce Almighty when like all the prayers are coming in. It's yep. just like this flood of emails of just people dying to get back in. Yeah. It's yep, going to yep, change yep. everything. Yep, 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 yep. So... Uh, what's the, what was the reaction like in the Ellis House was it like a triumph? I don't, I don't really talk to my family about that stuff. Well, you had to have been like thinking, talking to your wife, being like, "This is gonna, this just, this is for our kids." No, my wife doesn't care at all. <laughs> that I went to Harvard. Yeah, the legacy can be our kids won't go to Harvard. Correct. Because you not? haven't been donating. I don't donate. But what if they're just fucking geniuses? Stanford, though. They're too white. What if you're? Would you be pissed if your kids went to like Stanford or MIT? Are you out of your fucking mind? Of course. I'd be thrilled. Nah, I was hoping you would say yes. I'd be so thrilled. That's better than well, Harvard. I think you. I would think that any kids that go to Stanford and MIT are probably making more money, you know, five years out of college, ten years out of college, than Harvard kids. But you truly don't know in like uh, say eighteen or nineteen years what the bingo oppressed class will be. Mm-hmm. It could it be could, whites. It, it could be white males. It could be the the. Uh, the fair skinned ginger of us and it could be i mean who knows how gay your kids could wind up being yeah what's That's left the whole- what's left it, what have we not gotten to that if we actually are honest about it is a group of people that aren't doing so hot but we haven't f- learned to feel bad for them i'll yet. tell you who's not doing so hot or at least they they think they are but they're i promise you they're not is uh the, the white teens what do you mean? I was just at the deli, and oh my god, are those the worst people on the planet? Cutting the line, cutting me and my fucking my fellow hardworking American. Are you talking about yeah. skateboarders? No, I'm talking about like young kids. Teens, teens are bad. Teens are a bad. A lot of disrespect in Ray's deli today. And so, if so, do you, do you think that they have to be like <laughs> oppressed enough? Teens have to be oppressed for like the next you know 15 years where it'll come back around and they'll be the ones getting into Harvard? Because I feel like teens have always been the ones getting into Harvard. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly you know? just wanted to make the just talk about the raised deli thing because right, that get, really grounded my gears. Get it off your no, I got your it off. double D chest. I got, I got, I got <laughs> get it, it off your buxom fucking. I thought it would work better than it did. Delightful chest. Mm-hmm. No, I, I think that I, I'm. I'm truly trying to think of an answer to Francis's question. Who has been? Maybe it's the unhomed. No, what? Asians have had a moment this year, or like uh, last last year. COVID gave them a good moment. There. Oh, of being oppressed. Yeah, yeah, that's and true. And then we all kind of stop Asian hate. That was a trending thing. But was that ever really trending? Yeah, man, that was the thing, because there were all kinds of acts you know, of violence, crimes, and things like that because of uh, COVID. How it started in a in a lab in China. Yeah, Wuhan. Yeah. It's crazy how uh, just everybody sitting. No one gave a fuck about any of that when everyone was just walking around living their life. But the fact that everybody was forced to be in front of their computer and on their phone all day every day, they're like, I need something to care about. Yeah. And I don't think that that shit will bubble back up in any way because people just can live their life and care about the fucking problems that they have instead right. of everybody else's problems. Um, quick question, Roan. I see that you're wearing a couple of bracelets. Ah, uh, yes. So that's cool. And I wanted to that's know... That's cool for Roan. Yeah. How we do you, would not be able to pull that off. Well, I'm a watch guy. How do you get into the bracelets? And, and what, what's the starting point, significance? How do you choose one? How do you know if you're someone who can wear a bracelet? So about... Um, it was probably like four or five years ago. I had a summer where I went to like five different countries. Went to Turks and Caicos, Cuba, um, Ethiopia, um, uh, Italy, and uh, uh, Dubai. What country is Dubai in? United Arab Emirates? UAE. And so I went to those five, and I got a bracelet from every one of those uh, countries. Cool. I got a bracelet from every country. It was actually a diverse group of countries that I went to. That is. And yeah. one of them lasted longer than all the other ones. Dubai? Ethiopia. Italy? Cuba. 
Cuba, really? Wow. Cuba lasted the longest. And I bought them all at like the airport for like, it wasn't like nice bracelets, relatively cheap. Cuba just lasted. Cuba and Ethiopia lasted the longest. Ethiopia, I could see. Third world countries. Mm -hmm. And they were wound up making the most trustworthy things. So wait. So this is from, this this, this one's from Cuba. It says Cuba on it. Mm -hmm. And then this one is a picture of my, uh, it has like, if you look closely into this part, if you look closely in this part, it has a picture of my late dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's nice. Hmm. Laugh it up, bro. <laughs> what was I laughing at? Oh, you're real fucking funny, dude. <laughs> that was cool, man. Taking, that's ta crazy. Taking, you have a sick mind. <laughs> taking glee in that. I wow. was not laughing. That's, you that's nice. Oh, you got some set of balls, you dude. You trying to make some kind of joke <laughs> with, about with, dogs being not on time. <laughs> like, like, with your sarcastic oh. fucking... Oh, my boot, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> I yeah. was being supportive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right dude you don't have a supportive bone in your body i'm the most supportive person i know you need a bra for how unsupportive you are bro <laughs> sure you're does. sagging tits it's we'll crazy over here no but i I, are I, bullies. I i had another one that uh and then i tried to go meet a new dog and it ripped the fucking and the other one was expensive and the, the dog just ripped it to fucking shreds uh, that's crazy you think it knew Probably, no, no, it wasn't a dog bracelet. Oh, that would be oh, crazy oh, if it was like, fuck that dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuck your dead dog. I'm the new bitch in town. But uh, why are you thinking about getting in the bracelet well, game? Well, I've always wondered if I could pull it off. You can't. I'm telling you right now, you can't. You don't know anything. You're a watchman. You don't go outside. <laughs> I go up, I stand at the, I stand at the, at the, at the don't window. Go outside. I stand at the window and look out. That's pretty much the same thing as going outside. With you your hands? No, you're not. You're I'm the recluse. <laughs> you're a recluse. You have a big like window and you shy away from it like I do. a vampire. Somebody yelled my name I outside of my window right before you guys got here. I walked in a big pile of bottles as though you wanted to alert yourself in case an intruder <laughs> yeah. came in. No, dude. I told you those are from when I was sick, dude. I I, I just and I just never moved them because they're not really in my way. But you I said, only really. Move shit if it's in the way. You said you cleaned before we got here, which is I the did. funniest I thing I've ever because uh, I told it's dirtier than I've ever seen. It. I was at the office or like an hour ago, and Francis, I was like, "All right, Francis, I'm going back to my apartment. Uh, let me know." Or I was like, "You you good for one?" And he was like, "Why don't I just come with you?" And I was like, "Absolutely not." I had to do a lot of damage control. You said you vacuumed I threw out before like two full trash cans of, uh, th two full bags of trash before you, you said guys you got vacuumed here. before we got here, and this is just like the trash. At my feet. Yeah, piece so of that actually, I knew that was going to happen. It was because it was on this, and I swept it off could onto the I, floor. Could I this, pay this for a cleaning something. lady to come? No, I, I'm, I'm going to handle this, this stuff this week. But, but listen, there are things that they would do this. that you wouldn't do. No, I'm going to handle it. Ron, you don't have to be picking up all of the stuff on the floor. I moved it onto the floor for a reason. <laughs> the... <laughs> what reason? So that it wasn't on this, and it wasn't all over the laptop. What is that shit? It's just, it's just part of a fishing rod because I broke my fishing rod. It's like a piece. I was just debunking that you vacuumed. I promise you, I vacuumed. The vacuum is right there. there. Then why is I look at Francis's feet? There's stuff all by his feet. Because that shit that you can't pick up, dude. Paperclip doesn't go in the my vacuum. Sock Everyone is knows like that. Like a sponge of dirt. That's why you keep your shoes on. <laughs> it's like a brother pad. Yeah, I was trying to take my shoes off out of respect to not track dirty New York in here. But really, my shoes would act like a fucking gauze pad that, or like a sticky fucking mouse trap that would just pick up all the shit off your floor and it would clean. It, yeah. my the dirty New York streets would make your floor is cleaner i don't know what you guys want from me i will say I, I i after today i have some i have like a little i have an easy rest of the week so i'm gonna i'm getting a rug i'm gonna get a rug and i'm gonna get a lamp try and make this place a little more homey and how about some wall shit? less asylum -y. what about a little wall shit yeah i gotta get some wall stuff but all i've got is bob dylan and gabe davis so okay, that's fine bob i feel like hanging those up those are very small photos I feel like that would make it look even scarier so why don't you just get one <laughs> big fucking picture <laughs> Why don't you just get one behemoth like what, picture? Like a map? Yeah, a big one. Big yeah, one. a map. That's so easy. It's cool. It's a good map one. is so lame. Fly fishing picture. I tried. They're expensive, dude. Everything <laughs> fly fishing is expensive. Just all the fly fiction... fiction fly fly fiction? Pictures. Well, I don't want to get some like dog shit like fucking Amazon poster. You know what I mean? I want to get something good. We could find one for you. Yeah. Francis, well, though, that's we... what I was looking at. The good fly fishing one I found was like, they were like $1,000. How and I was much like, would I have to spend on a fly fishing <sighs> picture for you in order to come on your clavicle? Dude, zero. Or, uh, oh, so for free. <laughs> no. You're that's not it? coming on me. You're just willing? You're not coming Let on me. Let him come on you, dude. You're being gay. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs>
You're being extremely uh, gay. I'll change the subject. Here's a question that I have for you guys. All right. So I, I we I have to speaking of traveling, I have to plan a fucking trip for us to go to Italy because we have to go to a wedding in August. Yes. Destination? Uh, it's Obviously. In, <laughs> <laughs> was your were you asking? I wasn't asking. I was whether skating. you were saying I need what's you guys the to destination? Both hop off of my fucking ass. Were you saying what's the destination, or are you saying is that I a said destination? destination. He said yeah, destination. But you said it the way you always talk. <laughs> Where you ended up, which means it's a question. This is crazy. Have you guys just been like planning this out for the last... We haven't seen each other in a month, and you guys come in just fucking swinging at me. <laughs> this is nuts. Been looking forward to this. Can't say dick without getting fucking chewed out. Oh, first you tell me I can't come on you, next you... you France know. is trying to fucking rape me, and Roan's talking no. about how I need to wear a bra. It's, it's not rape. It's an agreement. <laughs> it's I said definitely how not much an would it take, and you get to answer... Okay, it's not a destination right, wedding. I'm right, sorry. So, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. It's not a destination wedding. No, it is a destination wedding. Well, okay. I am the one that stated that. <laughs> All right. Destination? Francis. Puglia. What about it? It's the heel of the boot. Okay. Um, you ever heard of this place? No. Puglia. It's the new hot spot. Really? It's where yeah. all the young kids are going. It's the cool spot. Anyway, that's where Jimmy the wedding Kimmel's is. going there? Flights are in the face. How, how, where, where, what city are you going to fly well, to? You, you got to fly to Bari. Which is you, there's no direct flight, so you fly either fly to Rome and then Rome to Bari, or you could fly to Paris and then Paris to Bari. Why don't you just fly private? I can't do that. It's, I've never done that. <laughs> all right, all right, continue. I've been on a private jet, but I've never paid when? for one. Been on a few. Really? Yeah. One time, my I had a, I had a friend in college who came from a wealthy family. Damn, that's awesome. It's a treat. It is but one time I was so hungover that um, while the plane was landing, I was throwing up in the toilet. That's terrible. But it's private, so they didn't even yell at me. Yeah, yeah, obviously. I was just on my hands and knees. The pilot's not going to get up and be like, sit back down. And I felt the smash of the wheels on the ground. Did that, that help the puke pr- a little bit? Propels, yeah, which, that's probably Like awesome. a Heimlich. Can we just say quickly, quick reversion to what you were telling me on the phone? Oh, I was yeah. laughing so <laughs> fucking hard. I, I call Hairball because I always call him to annoy him. And he hates that phone call. I know, he hates it. <laughs> he won't even talk on the phone to me. But he picks up every once in a while because he thinks I might have something problematic to talk to him about. It never is problematic? And it's never problematic. But I called him and it was when he was sick. And tell, tell me what you were saying. All right, so I, well, I, I think I was like, I think it was the third day. I don't think I was really that sick anymore. I think I was just like run down. But uh, it's pretty much what happened was I woke up on Monday like we're we're planning on recording at my apartment on Monday. Right. I woke up with a stomach ache, but I was like, it was nothing crazy. It was like, ah, man, my stomach. I was like, I feel like shit. I gotta drink some water or something. And then it's like ten, and I'm like, right, I gotta get up. I gotta clean this place and set up for Ron and Francis to come over. And I get up, go over to the bathroom, start shitting, and then like instantly, I'm all I'm like doing like handstands, like flipping over to throw up while shitting. And I was I was throwing up. What I said to France was I was throwing up with the amount of force that it was like. I think if someone took a photo of me or looked at me from like the side angle, I think my feet would have been like levitating above the ground. <laughs> like I think it would have looked like I was doing like a like a keg stand into the toilet. It was like my full body was like pulsate like <laughs> and then like 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 literally like my knees were like catching air His every time i would throw up <laughs> like a donkey kick like, yeah <laughs> that's literally that's what it felt like and it was crazy because it was like like barely anything was even coming out so it was just like repeatedly just like <gasps> Dude, this then, is, on the phone this made me laugh so hard that it made me think that all the other laughter i've had over the last couple of years has been fake laughter <laughs> that like, is i was like feeling. oh that was what it felt like <laughs> to, really to laugh, laugh without any control over how i'm laughing that image of him puking in the toilet and his legs <laughs> coming off the ground <laughs> Dude, it was insane. That was the sickest I've been in like in like so long. Your body just desperately trying to get everything just out of you. Every, dude, I was shitting, just pink socking so, your esophagus dude, so aggressively, <laughs> and then like 
cutting off the shit mid shit to then like get on my knees and throw up. Did you wipe before you threw up? Almost certainly not. Obviously not. So you're throwing up on top of the poop? Yeah. Did you not even flush it? Dude, there was no, I promise you, there was no time. That is really revolting. Dude, it was insane. Wait, so you're throwing up on top of the poop with your dirty ass getting thrown up into the air? (laughs) With my dirty ass all over the ground. And like leaking, leaking Leaking shit, shit all over my ass. Dude, dude. it was insane. Are you kidding me? Dude, and then I got up and I was like, woo. (laughs) Dude, it's such like a, it's such like a, like a, a, I don't even know what the word to use. It's like embarrassing. Because you get up after that and it's like almost like funny because you're like, that's, that was crazy. You're like, where did that just come from? It's like getting off a roller coaster. (laughs) You're like, what the? And you're looking in the mirror and your eyes, you're like crying. There's tears all over your face. And then you just got to go get back in bed and be like, well, I hope that doesn't happen again. And then, of course, five minutes later, you're back up throwing up. Just doing break dancing moves on the toilet seat, <laughs> fucking flipping from face Whoa. to ass. But I only threw up three times. That after was the weird. third time. Just getting off the tilt and whirl. <laughs> yeah. After the third time, I got up and I was like, I'm not, I'm just not going to throw up again. Because it was so intense that I, so then I just laid in bed. And kept it inside of you. Laid in bed. No matter. No. So nauseous for like 24 hours straight. No wonder but you I got ref- so sick. Yeah, I refused to throw up again. Because the third time it was like, my throat was like, it felt like my throat was bleeding. It was, dude, it was yeah. terrible. Throwing up when you're sober. Yeah. Is a completely different experience Which from is, throwing up when yeah. you're drunk. And I haven't thrown up since I was in. That was the first time I'd thrown up sober since I was in sixth grade. Yeah, you get so, that. I get that pain in my taint. Yeah, you yeah. Get that taint cramp. Yeah, I get the taint cramp, and then you get yeah, a headache. You get your the throat the hurts. Throat, yeah, oh, it's awful. But it was crazy because I was like, I mean, I've obviously I've thrown up drinking a bunch, and which I, is and a I, relief. But dude, you feel throwing like you're doing up a drinking thing for yourself. and not throwing up sober for a while, it really downplays what throwing up is. Because I was under the impression like, well, if I got to throw up, it'll be quick and easy. Pull the trigger and yeah. just... Yeah, yeah, dude, just, it was, I mean, digging to the bottom of my body trying to get anything out of there. Yeah, yeah. you're just dry even at the end. It's so miserable. Yeah, it's tough. Have you ever thrown up, not sick, but like... Yeah. Uh, just thrown up in the middle of the day. Yeah, nauseous, like I, car sick. I, I did, it happened to me a couple of years ago that I, I like ha- ate, ate some vitamins and then like. Well, were, were they were those were was it those Ollie daily men's vitamins? It wasn't that. No, it was like a handful of like okay. uh, of like just every vitamin under the sun. And then I drank like a Trienta like <laughs> uh, Starbucks uh, like peach iced tea or yeah, something like yeah. that and then i just couldn't stop like fucking projectile <laughs> vomiting oh like my God. violently throwing up <laughs> and i wasn't sick and it was just like i had i had a vitamins and empty stomach and like 30 ounces of starbucks liquid in my fucking body yeah, yeah. it's and that's like a it's a confusing and like you said embarrassing feeling. yeah it's yeah. like when a dog throws up yeah and you like it's like sh- it's like yeah it's humiliating i don't know why because it's like you're by yourself it shouldn't be but it's like it's you feel so vulnerable when you're throwing up (laughs) like there's nothing you can do to protect yourself it's just like everything yeah Yeah. if you wanted to that would have been the time i was defenseless (laughs) you'd have to be on top it was dude throwing up right over my shoulder (laughs) it was insane just being naked on the floor of a bathroom like a that song my like shirt on ass covered in shit Oh, just God, sitting there that. like oh. i don't want to do that dude. it's I, I mean i remember being a kid and just like telling my my dad like i want to die yeah that's like, what it don't feels say like that. yeah that's what it's it feels like i like. want to be dead right now <laughs> i'd rather be dead than feeling what i'm feeling it's that's so really what it was like dude i was like i wish someone would break into my house and shoot me in the head <laughs> have you ever had a moment in your lives where you thought i'm gonna die uh no i mean in terms I'm, of being in terms death. of in terms of sickness when i had mono in college because i was sick for like a month but i wasn't throwing i was never throwing up but that was like that was lasting for so long that i was like i think there's a chance that i might not make it out of this mm. like I, I i was looking up like like if mo- there was like some is i think like leukemia the the ta- the test can be like similar to Mono. Like you, you could test positive for mono, and it could be leukemia. But you had it's a something bad with your white blood cells. Phase, though. Yeah, but I was never actually like I'm gonna die. That was like I, I was like that was hypochondria was out of control because I was sick for so long that I was like, there's no way this is mono. It was too much. Yeah. 
I think that <laughs> there's been times when with bad turbulence where oh. like I don't think it but my body is going through such like yeah. fucking turmoil that my body thinks it and it feels that like incredible tension and there's been times when I've been like getting bundled by waves in the ocean oh, where yeah, I'm like yeah, oh yeah. this could be it when you <laughs> fully good. lose control yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, rolling over like your head you're like ass <laughs> And you're but that's another time where I get out of the water and I'm just hysterically laughing at being like that was in like what just happened. You're like ass cracks hanging out, <laughs> like, trying to get your like, it's butt- sand in your pockets. <laughs> yeah, in your pockets, like under yeah. your ball sack, and like your pockets are heavy with sand, <laughs> wet sand with shells in it. Yeah, that might be like the hardest I've ever laughed is like when you get like fully scorpioned and you're like oh. your 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 face is on the fucking sand and your <laughs> legs are like over your body. But you, you know, can like, get paralyzed that. Way. Way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, People for sure. get dumped on a, by a wave on a too shallow of a break, <laughs> yeah. and, and you're in bets it's, bad because you know it's coming when you're when you go to catch a wave body surfing, and then all of a sudden you're at the top of the wave and you're going like head first into the water. You're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're fucked. Like almost tucking, go into like a full like pill like fucking formation, yeah, yeah. like a little pill bug. You ever seen a really good body surfer when they carve across yeah. the wave with one hand out? We Those had guys a, are for real. We went to I went to Martha's Vineyard when I was really young, and there was a dude that was body surfing there and he would do this thing where instead of like how we would catch the wave where you kind of just swim into it he would do this two two both arm roll like formation where he would he would go like this he would catch the wave and he'd go and then he would be inside the wave Mm. and he would fuck he would i mean he was a he was a monster on the waves yeah that's cool my brother-in-law taught me about this way that you can uh jump jump in a pool it's like some kind of boy scout maneuver where you jump into a pool and you do some shit with your arms that like <laughs> as you jump in your head never goes underwater <laughs> a lifeguard dive is what and i was like taught that was doing some yeah, like karate yeah. shit as you jump in i i i feel like i worked on it for 40 minutes <laughs> and I, every single time i just was spastically fucking throwing my arms around it never worked at all i would have loved to have been able to fucking land it francis have you ever uh, felt like you were going to die Oh, um, yep, twice. Actually, no, cute a couple times, and I think I was right. <laughs> yeah, have you ever had any actual close calls? Yeah, to being like, I've I could have just died. I've, I've, I've had a few. I've had some bad moments where, um, you start to think I need to get religious. Yeah, because uh, one time I dove off my dock. I was alone, and I hit my head on a cement anchor. I, I think told you, you told story? me. You told me about that. Yeah, and I was alone, and I. Yeah, I, you did. I remember you telling me about I that. I came out of the water, <laughs> I, and I don't know why I didn't lose consciousness <laughs> because I dove onto a cement block. <laughs> the first thing that hit was my head, me? and 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 I came out of the water, and there was blood shooting. <laughs> Like arcing, like I could see it as a constant stream. I think it was making a sound, like a. Tss. That's so funny. It was it was shooting out of my head, like in a fountain, like a like a spitting cupid, unbroken, as though you'd like cut a hole or a little slit in like a water balloon, or I, I don't even know what. And it's, it's, I was just thinking the other day about how I've never bled like how they bleed in movies where it's I was like I don't think you actually anyone actually bleeds like that I was the spraying it was <laughs> it was insane. a it was a, a faucet of blood <laughs> co- coming out of my head oh and, my um, god Wait, I, you're so lucky you didn't go unconscious well that's what's that and the fact that I didn't break my neck because it was a complete spinal stopping you know I, I i dove and my hands went over <laughs> the it was a bucket of cement that was anchoring the dock and my hands went over it which meant that the first thing that hit was my head yeah oh my. you can see the scar so it com- a good scar there it like compressed your spine right you oh yeah i see it oh Jesus my Christ. god yeah it's like exactly in the center of your right head and that's exactly head. how people get paralyzed yeah and then I came out of the water and I went, Mom! <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Help! That's hilarious. Help. And my mom, you know, our, our house we, we, it was, is like set back. And so I was all the way down, all the way at the end of the, like, uh, the marsh and then the water. And so it was really far away. My mom was in the front of the house and I was off the back of the house, yard, down the steps dock end of the dock 
And so she didn't hear me. She was on the phone. But our next door neighbors heard me. And the guy came out and he goes, are you okay? And I go, no, <laughs> I've hit my head. <laughs> and he goes, how bad? <laughs> and I was like, I can see the blood. And he goes, do you need an ambulance? And I go, I think so. <laughs> and then were I, you just in the water, treading water? Or? The water was only. This is why this happened was because I it, I had <laughs> it misjudged how deep the water was. It was half tide, <laughs> oh so God. I thought it was a lot deeper than it was, and it wasn't. You're just standing there. <laughs> I was. I wasn't even. It wasn't even up to my waist. <laughs> oh my it's like just above my knee. But it's murky water, so I yeah, couldn't yeah. see. Dude, and I was really hung over too. So that is insane. And so I, I was standing in the water, and then I knew, well, if I'm going to pass out, I need to make sure I'm not in the water, because then I'll drown, drown. So I then shuffled the back to the dock, and I sat on the dock. And I'm sitting on the dock with my feet in the water, and I'm thinking, okay, well, somebody will come get me. But I'm still watching the blood. <laughs> it's yeah. Not, it's not getting... It's not tapering Which is off. probably a good thing. You don't want that to start slowing down. No, it wasn't <laughs> slowing down. And I'm like, man, this is getting to be a lot of blood and and you could see it in the water and so then i got i was like well i need to now i need to make an effort to get to get help so i s decided to stand up and i was walk i started walking up the the dock and then the steps and later i would go back and look and there was a an unbroken trail of blood all the way up. Oh no! Yeah, like a in a in a not drops like closed caption or a closed circuit TV video of somebody getting shot at a supermarket and they yeah. like walk out and there's just like that trail of blood. Like behind there was them. a hole in my foot and I had dragged my foot all the way in a line to oh, like make my a line. God! And then I got all the way to the top. By this point, um, that guy had had called my mom, and so just as I got to the top of the yard, my mom came out the back, and I was. My whole body is covered in blood. Covered in Imagine blood. Imagine how terrified she was. Yeah, but she she went into like mom mode. She was she like, goes, "We're gonna come fix here," this. and she got a towel and she applied pressure, and it was like this amazing kind of instinctual mama like, bear this thing. And then we called an ambulance, and I got in the ambulance, and we went to the hospital. And I've been in ambulances before too. I, I've, I've hurt my, I've hurt myself a lot. Uh, there was always like a kid in high school who had like cracked his head open like six yeah, times. I did that. I did that. A lot. I had a traumatic head injury in uh, in college. It was uh, one of my friends at Penn State was on the first floor dorm. This dude named Mike Ford. They called him Mods because like Model T Ford. He was like this six eight offensive tackle, just a big dude. And I would just go to his window and like knock up and like hide and like fuck with him. And he'd like come to the window like buck at me. <laughs> And I'd like come back three minutes later and like fucking pop my head up, tap on the window, and he'd like fucking be like, "Who the fuck's out there?" <laughs> but by the third time I did it, he like just whipped around and came out the door. And it was the nighttime, so I sprinted off into the darkness of the night at, at uh, Penn State, and I didn't even know what happened. And then suddenly I was on my back. I fucking ran into a horizontal tree branch that just clotheslined me oh. and fucking knocked me out. I had to go to the hospital. I got like three staples in my head up here, and it was the same kind of like just bl nasty, nasty blood just geysering from my head. Oh. And it was so embarrassing in the same way. It was just like all my fault. I was being a fucking stupid dickhead yeah. trying to mess with mods, and uh, he fucking chased my ass down, and now I have a lump in my fucking brain. Really? Or like a, it's yeah, just like a, pal a palpable lump Jesus, in my head. dude. But that's that's harmless That's harmless fun. That's not stupid. It's not like you jumped out of a tree to impress a group of frat people. Is that what you did? No, I didn't. But a lot <laughs> of people do that. That's the yeah. video you typically see in that's like the That's like the go-to move for frat what? dudes. Is jump to like jump of off of a high object. Yeah. What? Yeah, you yeah. Like, yeah, if you like thing. jumping off of roofs into like yeah. into pools. That's some Chef Donnie shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. Just jumping off. I of honestly, dude, I took a spill in here two days ago. That was the that was the most like out of control I've been in a while. I fell down those two stairs. I thought I broke my ankle, <laughs> and then I just went in and laid in bed, and like thirty minutes passed, and it was completely fine. You just rolled your ankle. Yeah, rolled. It, it, it We're hurt. gonna have to see how this develops. It hurts so. Let me bad. go lie down and see what happens. I was like, <laughs> what? I don't even know what I slipped on. <laughs> Here's me taking care of myself. You you just you're just saying like. The world's dangerous today. 
Yeah, pretty so much. So we better play it safe and yeah. go to bed. <laughs> no, I went and laid in. I was already on my way into my room. So you're going to lay down anyway. To get something. So you jerked off about it and you're fine. (laughs) I honestly, I was, I was in the middle of playing video games and I went, I was going to get like my phone charger and then I just laid in bed for like five minutes and then got back up and hurt still. But now it feels completely fine. It is crazy how like a rolled ankle in the moment can be the most painful thing ever. And then within 30 minutes, you're like, yeah, pretty okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The worst part of my situation was that when we finally got to the hospital, they had to numb up the wound and then I had little pieces of the cement bucket had lodged into my skull oh and so they had to go in and they had to scrape them out these little bits and i couldn't feel anything uh, but i well i could kind of feel it but it, it, it the sensation was like someone was dragging their fingernails down a chalkboard inside my head were you definitely concussed i don't know you must have been there's no way like that you your brain. That, if you get that bad of a head injury, they probably don't even like think about a concussion. My They're girlfriend, probably like, yeah, but we got bigger things to worry about. <laughs> yeah. my, like high school, death. <laughs> my high school girlfriend at that time that I wasn't particularly serious with had been her period had been late, and so I had I was very bleeding for the both of you troubled <laughs> <laughs> that she was pregnant and. Uh, on, I, I hadn't told her, I had hung out with her the night before and then she left and then the next morning I did the, I jumped off the dock this all oh, happened. Oh, did she think you were killing yourself? No, no, she didn't know but oh. I, I left the hospital <laughs> and she was like, uh, I got some good news. I, I, I got my period today. As I got, I read that text in the ambulance. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was picturing you like uh, being in the, the hospital, gripping her up, being like, "I don't want this kid to grow up without a dad." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this girl was not. Worth... I thought you were going to tell her that you tried, you tried to kill yourself. If that would be hilarious been, if she had been pregnant and 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 insisted on having the kid. I would. You would have jumped myself. back yeah. off yeah. the dock because she. Yeah, I thought the tide went up. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it was lower than ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's no water there. I don't think I've had any. I don't think I've really had any like crazy. I mean, I told you about the time when I was biking and I got clotheslined by that wire. Mm. When yeah. I was in, like, I was really young when that happened. I was in like fifth grade when that happened. Yeah, but that doesn't I was, sound that bad compared I was to the biking stories in that Ronan I no. just told. I don't think that's really in the same. But I did almost like my. Bleeding. There was like a big cut in my neck. Like this big. Was it bleeding though? Yeah. But just a little. It was sort of just red and not, not open. No, openly it was bleeding. like scabbed over and yeah, shit. Yeah, scabbed, but not. There's no scar. And then my, no cause I remember I, I was having a sleepover that night and I went back to the kid's house and my mom picks me up the next morning and the parents like never told my mom. Yeah, they. So they, my mom picks me up and I had this fucking gash through my neck and I my mom was like, what the fuck is this? I think when you're able I was to like continue nine. a sleepover, it's probably not that bad. I think it was. In, I think it was in. I was in immense amounts of pain. But when you're that age, you're like, I'll fight through this for the sleepover. No, because I remember being that age and I had bad pain and I had to cancel sleepovers. That's because you weren't about it. No, it's because I was having worse injuries than you were. You weren't about hanging with the boys. I think our when I was that age, dude, I, I could have lost a limb and toughed it out for the sleepover. <sighs> Sleepovers did give you that laughter you were just talking about, <laughs> yeah. Francis. That that like true, pure like I can't stop laughing. Oh laughing. yeah, the best, the best. Especially when it's like four in the morning and like one of the parents comes down I was and the, so the dad comes down in his boxers. Sleep though, and he's like, "Shut it down now!" <laughs> and you're like, "Fuck you!" You're mumbling under your breath. La- <laughs> you're, you're trying to hold in the laughter so bad as you're all pretending to be asleep. Well, some random kid's dad is just hovering over you. I heard talking down here. It's four in the fucking morning. <laughs> Shut up, dick. <laughs> Shut up, old bitch. That's what you guys were doing? Oh, yeah. We were always very sweet to the parents of the sleepovers. Same. Very Unless sweet. Sounds like you guys had a boring-ass childhood. What you fucking talk- I had black friends. The fuck do you mean, bro? <laughs> well, that's probably why you were so sweet. <laughs> They were gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> First off, it was at my house. <laughs> ah, okay. My sweet ass parents are aren't whipping. They my wouldn't f- let you go over to the black kids' houses. No, we went over there too. 
Well, you said first of all it was at my house. Is in this all one, of this, them this were at one your that house? I'm talking about. This specific sleepover. Oh, that I'm you talking remember about. exact sleepovers? This well, I remember the one joke that made me laugh so hard, and we were like trying to tell people to stop laughing, and I was like, "Cut it out!" And one kid was like, "Okay," and it had some imaginary sisters. <laughs> <and started, laughs> around his body, and I was like, oh, "That my is killer." God. That is funny. I like couldn't <laughs> control my my impulses in my body. What? Um, oh. Italy, Puglia. Yes. Here's the, here's the question. Destination? So, destination. It's a destination. <laughs> here's the question that I have for you guys, right? If um, if I'm paying for the flights, am I allowed to not get a gift? Buy one uh, business class seat and then like one premium economy seat, and I get the business class seat, and my wife takes the premium economy seat. She'll be pregnant at this time, so that's all. You're gonna be so fucked over that it's gonna be flipped on its head, and you're gonna wind. Yeah, up you're gonna end the, up in like coach somehow, and she's gonna be stretching her feet out. I can't do it. What about this? If she's pregnant, absolutely no, not. No, of course not. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> but here's the, okay. Think. Here's about here's I'll another here question. Me. <laughs> can we do? Can we do this? You could swap. Like, can we get through? one business class seat and one like regular premium economy seat? And then we do we if it's like a ten hour flight, we we each get Split five hours in the business class seat and five hours, and we swap yeah. mid flight. Can you I think do that's that? fair. I think that's fair. Can you do that? You should I, be you, able yeah, to. You absolutely can. I've do seen that. people do it with court especially seats. on a long flight on a five hour flight. You can definitely do that. Eh. Ten ten hour flight. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, but it, like you could definitely switch five hours in. I think that would be a great solution, but. Sometimes they get weird about like meals and shit when you're up front like that. Well, They're like, you're yeah, not, I'll, you we'll didn't order, bit. you didn't order the steak. I don't remember you being up here. But we'll tell them, we'll tell them because they'll know. Yeah, I think that works. I think you could do that for sure. I think that's a good solution. Do you, do what, what's, what would your wife think about that? Have you broached the subject? You'd have to pick breach. Well, I mean, I just, you clear everyone. I don't, I, right now, I don't have enough miles or liquidity to really get two business class seats. And I don't want to go on this trip unless we're comfortable because I don't even want to go at all. <laughs> the problem is <laughs> everyone's going to want the back half. No one, like the back half is clearly going to be the better half to take the good seat. Getting woken up to be like, okay, yeah. you got to go back to a fucking... Oh, sorry, I know you had a really seat. peaceful first five hours. Go slum it out in the back for the last five. Except premium economy is going to be good still. It won't be bad, but it's not as good. It's, it's such not bullshit a that the, uh, a guy is like forced to be a gentleman in that situation. Ever since I've been married, I've taken the middle seat every... Like, if we're three across, my wife will always get the window. I will always have to have the middle seat. I sat well, next to a 500-pound Hasidic dude on the fucking way to Chicago the other so. day. And this dude fucking was... He literally... Knocked my arm off the fucking. Yeah, I've had that happen. He like not like accidentally. He like just wow. while I was asleep, knocked my shit off. It was so fucking painful. But oh. I think what the couples are doing these days is you're getting they're going aisle seat aisle seat next to each other. So no one has the middle seat. So neither of you have the middle seat. You both have aisle seats, but you're still next to each other. Well, how are we gonna cuddle then? <laughs> you are telling me that the <laughs> Hasidic Jewish guy was encroaching into your space. Yeah, you get what I'm putting down. <laughs> Fucking, and he was using tunnels. <laughs> it's the other way around, actually. Here's here's my question. Uh, I was flying on a flight not too long ago, and I was I didn't even know it, but I was sitting directly next to uh, a Muslim guy, mm. and at one point in the flight, he started praying. Okay, just put a uh, did he put rug down, down like in the, the aisle? No, he did it in his seat. He was making so much half ass parents. And I was like, dude, I don't think we're flying west. <laughs> <laughs> You're but actually doing this wrong? I, I, I was so culturally aware that I was like, I don't actually think you we're flying west. You pull up the flight west. map and you're like, Mecca is actually this way. Yeah, based on the orientation <laughs> of the plane. But um, he did that and he was going through the whole thing, you know? And it, I, I was trying to be so progressive and, and like, Open minded. Hold his hand. Hey, you're like giving me water. I was just telling myself the whole time, this is fine. This is fine. Because deep down, you thought that something. You thought that he was saying his last rites. It's it's so conjuring of. I hate to say it, but the but nastiest ideas of so what people. So conjuring of, of it. Uh, the, yeah, the nastiest ideas. Of I people mean, dude, I've had I've had uh, 
like Ubers or cab drivers where I've walked up to the Uber and the dude was on the ground. Yeah, but that's praying. on the. I'm to, and you on, just got to stand there and be like, dude, we're four seats we from going? the fucking cockpit, bro. And there's a guy. Was he aisle praying. seat or middle seat or, or or window seat? He had aisle. I had window. So you would have had to cowboy oh, okay, collar yeah. tackle him. Let's just put it this way. I started stretching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. If he's in the aisle, that's trouble. Your seat belt. I took out a long length of dental floss. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to grow rot quietly. Dude, he's like, terrorism, Dude, you don't need that much floss. And I was like, you'll see. Terrorism doesn't scare me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. That's a generational... I, it doesn't scare me. I mean, obviously, 9-11, I was horrified, but I think I've, like, I think I've rehabilitated very well. We're not going through this again. Uh, about what? You don't get to, you don't get 9-11. <laughs> I don't know if you say that, but Pearl I Harbor clearly do. had me shaking in my boots. You don't get to have it. It's not I, yours. 9-11 was probably the scary. We said, have you ever been scared of dying? <laughs> yes. On September 11, 2001. I remember Hiroshima fucking like it was yesterday. It was terrifying. Mm-hmm. Oh, I watched Oppenheimer. You hadn't seen it? No. It's great. So good. So good. So good. I haven't seen a movie like that in a while where like I was I was fully in within two minutes. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, and, like, me this. phone down. Dude, what what was up with people saying that the last hour was bad? I I, I didn't find or, it. Long they must at just all. be fucking stupid. Because people wanted the climax to be the bomb. Yeah, they, but like, yeah. People, the funniest. I thought that was hilarious too. That people were like, they don't even show it hitting Hiroshima. They don't it was see like, yeah, the well, they, yeah, they Japanese make like a, skin yeah, melting they off. They make a recreation of the fucking sloughing off people's skin getting burnt off. We yeah. need ten thousand Japanese extras. <laughs> yeah. I thought that movie. I thought the last hour was we're, amazing. We're, look, we're looking for people that used to weigh seven hundred pounds <laughs> and have cut a lot of weight but can't afford the. Skin. Skin surgery <laughs> to tighten We're it up. We're gonna blow a fan at you guys really hard. <laughs> and by the way, our our director of photography, Francis, is gonna try to titty fuck <laughs> a few of the men if you can. The excess skin. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's a really good movie, dude. And but have you guys watched Saltburn yet? That was the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life. I can't stop hearing about how good it is. People are telling me it's incredible. If anyone is telling you that that movie is incredible, I'm not even kidding. You should cut them out of your life. John Feidelberg was your boy. Cut, him, cut him out of your life. Favorite movie he's seen in all year. He then, I mean, then that that actually, I just lost a lot of respect for Feidelberg. Do out of order anymore? No, we might have to cancel that entire show. <laughs> that was the worst movie I've ever seen. What did you in hate my about entire it? life? A have you ever seen the talent, talented Mr. Ripley? Yeah, it was the exact same. They, they stole the plot word for word. He blatantly stole that movie. At mm-hmm. first, the I dude, thought it was going to be a little call me or like a call me by your name situation. That, that movie be like knives out. fucking sucked. It was also in so, a weird way. It was like that South Park episode, like a poop that made a pee, where it was like they, they just wrote the most fucked up and like disgusting shit that they possibly could it's just so everyone would be like ew like I, yo I, I legitimately like that movie was so bad that i got like angry at the world after Fran- that, I, that that people are actually saying that they like you no one enjoyed that movie nobody I, I liked that movie it. francis you should watch i bet you'll enjoy it i think i will Have you seen talented mr ripley yes you'll watch it and within five seconds you'll turn it off you'll go this is just a blatant rip i don't really mind movies that are derivative dude it's not movies. derivative it's, I a, it's a carbon friends copy. with benefits and i like no strings attached dude it's a carbon <laughs> copy it's the exact same movie <laughs> those are the two movies that are the same and i like them both this i promise you these are more similar i liked both fire festival documentaries that's way different i've given you i like i liked, I liked painkillers and i liked dope sick I liked them both. Uh, they, dude, this was... The, and I then think you're just squeamish. The craziest part was that the, the director was like, "I there was zero inspiration taken from Talented Mr. Ripley. It's like, yeah, dude, except for the entire movie. You fucking dumbass. I'm so sick of these movies that like are so bad. And then people are like, right. that was actually a phenomenal Here's film. Here's a good one for you. Anatomy just because they're like, NY, it's because people like movies where they're, they know they're bad. But then they're like, well, I went to NYU film school. So actually, I know reasons why this movie's better. We the, need you to just. The cinematography in this movie is phenomenal. Point. Great let shots. Uh, let's move on to fucking bullshit. What I dude. have to say, which is Anatomy of a Fall. What, what's that one? I, I, I saw I heard it on that someone's was list. <laughs> What? You didn't like it? The I pivot. Just, the pivot was funny. Uh, you're funny, dude. No, I, I like I, I do. I could go only, on about that movie. I don't even know if you know we're here. Sometimes I know I could go on about this movie. Like I do, the thoughts I have on this movie 
Like I'm not even kidding. Like angry at the world for how bad that movie I was. Get it? A waste of space and time. I know how you feel about the film. They should kill everyone that was involved in that movie. They should round them up and burn them. That's not. That's not nice. They should to make say. them all jump off of that fucking deck <laughs> and smash their heads in. Good. Let's find more ways to describe it. And then it. everyone that went on Letterbox and was perfect. like 10 out of 10 perfect film. Or time. Let's try this again. We accidentally forgot to record the first one. But it's such a pleasure to talk about Hello Fresh. <laughs> Hello Fresh. <laughs> Hello Fresh that we want to do it again. But I'm just ready to talk about Hello Fresh once more. Look, guys, that last minute that we just recorded, that was a warm up. This is the real deal. Let's get down to it. Hello Fresh. If your New Year's resolution is to save, save money, money or eat and eat better, better or stress, stress less, less. Hello Fresh is here to help you do all three of those things. Say hello, hello. to your most delicious year yet with HelloFresh ingredients, ingredients and chef crafted recipes, recipes at a price that'll that you'll really like and it'll be delivered, delivered right, right to your, to your door. door each HelloFresh box is packed with warm farm, farm fresh, fresh and warm ingredients <laughs> everything arrives pre-portioned right to your door for less hassle and less wasted food don't, don't let, let recipe, recipe board them strike, strike because HelloFresh has more options than ever before that's right Dig, Dig into their the biggest, biggest menu, menu yet, yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from. Weekly. Weekly. And even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. That's right. No matter what, if you're if you're on the go, if you have tons of time for dinner, if you're a culinary expert, or if you're a novice to the game, HelloFresh is going to have you tickled in your taste bud region. They're going to have you all set. Look, I like HelloFresh. I think I've talked about this before, but one time I made the HelloFresh uh, burgers with the lettuce wraps. Oh, yeah. One time <laughs> I made it when my wife was away because it's the closest thing I've got to what she cooked, and it was amazing. And I didn't need to change down. any... And you get creative with it, too. You I get a little need zesty. To. Everything they but had you didn't even need to, was, it was perfect. perfect. It was perfect as is. So... That's just what HelloFresh is. They're freaking perfect, and that's why... It's uh, tasty, quick, it's fresh, etc. And guess what? We got a little deal for our Son of a Boy Dad listeners. If you go to HelloFresh.com slash SunFree and use code SUNFREE for free breakfast for life... For life. That means that's one life. breakfast item per, per box, box while the subscription, subscription is active. active. Okay? That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash SUNFREE with code SUNFREE. Why don't you head on over to, sun, to uh, HelloFresh.com and use code SUNFREE. Now back to the show. Thank you. I've never watched a full movie like that and been genuinely angry. You're <laughs> circling back. You've covered that. Find new ways. I'm just saying. What did you feel I apologize about, for what I said about the Holocaust uh, there. Things got out of control. But you, that movie is so as bad. A, as a Jew, did though, you, you were like allowed that to say movie? that. Uh, I, I, during the whole thing, I was like, oh, they're just trying to put like cram in as much fucked up stuff as possible. Um, Wait. You had a take before he went off. And I trust you'll honestly give us that take. What was your take before his take? I, I, I wasn't offended. It's like a very conversation-starting movie. It's like something that will Which give means it's you... Bad. We no, wanted no, to have a good. conversation, and then he delivered the fucking Gettysburg Address. Which I think proves how that it, the movie is good art, because it has given him such a visceral reaction. Have you ever, what's your favorite movie? Inception. Inception. Have you ever had anyone explain Inception and be like, that movie was very curious, really thought provoking, or like that that movie is a fun one to bounce you, conversations off that. That means it's if pedantic. you have to, if you have to describe a movie as people Why like all try? the all the comments are like, this movie's it, it's not great, but it's fun. That yeah, the movie sucks. That's all I, that when means. I, I, when I was watching it, I was like, all right, this movie's ass. That that it was just like they're they're just trying to they're they're like. It's almost comical where they're just like, "What's the most fucked up thing that we could put in this in this part of the movie? Yeah. And what's the most fucked up thing we could put in this part of the movie?" But I watched it till the end. I enjoyed it, and I've enjoyed talking about it and bringing it up to people. Cool. So I think overall, you watch it. thumbs up from Rome. <laughs> no. I would tell you should watch it. Thumbs up. It's a oh thumbs up. Oh my lord, <laughs> Francis, you gotta watch. You Francis, watch it I would I'm pay you. It. I would pay you to not watch this I'm movie. Go, wh how Why? A hundred dollars. How about what if you let him? Yes, you know what I'm asking. No, I'll pay you a hundred dollars to not watch this I movie. I don't watch the movie, do I? No. Squeeze him. No. Squeeze him. No. Together. We do have to end though. We got to go into this live. Okay. Um, we'll cram in some ads, and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Goodbye.